Hello, thank you for joining Unpacking the Pages, a collaboration between Baxter County Library and Nancy Lee. We're discussing today the book Tiny Beautiful Things by Cheryl Strayed. Oh my goodness, I love this book for so many reasons. It provides hope. A life of resilience when we look at things a different way. Even when you are in difficult circumstances, you can find tiny, beautiful things. This book is a collection of letters selected from the advice columnist, Sugar. She takes real-life readers, questions who pour their hearts out to her, and here's an example of a letter from the book. It's called Faux Friendship Footsie. Dear Sugar, I may be in love with my friend. He may be in love with me. At the very least, we love each other's company. We see each other every day, talk on the phone at least two or three times, and miss each other when we have to say goodbye. There's a high degree of sexual tension that quickly manifested in our friendship, which we try to control by talking honestly to one another and discussing the reason it can't come to fruition. He's in a serious, monogamous relationship with a kind, beautiful, loving woman that I also consider a friend. At first, we tried to brush off the mutual attraction as natural. We both found each other physically attractive. Whether it's natural or not, there were nights when it seemed unbearable not to touch. So we should decide we should spend time apart. But attempting to stay apart was only amplified on how much we'd come to rely on each other. We'd only get a few hours into the day before one of us called the other. Then we tried to see each other only when his girlfriend was included as well. Horrifyingly, her presence didn't dispel the tension. It just made me feel guiltier. We've never kissed. We've never crossed a physical boundary. But something is happening. He's not going to leave her, at least for not now. Nor would I ask him to. As strongly as I may feel about him, I recognize they do genuinely love each other. We're not going to have an affair as it would only end badly for everyone. We're probably not going to stop seeing each other either. We've tried for the last two months and can't seem to make that happen. We are trying very, very hard to keep things platonic, but it shouldn't be this hard. If we'd met at a different time, we'd probably be lovers. My friend is brilliant kind, generous, talented, passionate, interesting, charming, funny, and warm. We spend hours talking. We're never bored. We can't stop smiling around each other. We really like each other. Our friendship means everything to me and to him, but it's not going to survive if we don't find a way to curtail the lust that only seems to grow stronger. What do I do, sugar? I love him. I respect and admire his girlfriend. I want to do right by everyone. More than anything else, I want us to stay friends. So why doesn't this seem to be working? And here's Sugar answer. Dear friend, it doesn't seem to be working because you aren't really friends with this man. You're having a sexually repressed, mildly deceitful, romantic relationship with him. You're dry dating, and this particular version of dry dating stinks and will continue to stink until A. Your friend breaks up with his girlfriend so the two of you can explore your feelings for each other. B. The two of you embrace the fact that we are all lying jackasses sometimes and you have an affair that includes sex and not just emotional affair you're, abs you're obviously having now. And C. You break off the relationship with your friend because you are falling in love with him and he is unavailable. A is out because you have no control over whether your friend will break up with his girlfriend. B is out because you've already established wisely that you don't want to be a lying jackass, fun as that may be for a while. But C is all yours. And from Sugar's candy sweet vantage point, it is so very crystal clear that is what you need to do. C is not fun. At first glance, parting ways with your seriously cool, smoking hot, but ever so very attached wonder boy seems like the worst idea of all. 
But trust me when I say it, it's the only route to take when you believe you want, which is him. But it's all of him. Not him on the sly, not him as a friend. You want to sleep with him, but can't. To get what you want in a romantic relationship, you must say what you want. Shall we say it together? You want your friend to be free, fall in love with you for real. This tortured, half-assed, overheated game of faux friendship footsie the two of you are simply won't do. Didn't you find that extraordinary? She was direct, she was honest, and she provided a solution. I believe Cheryl Strayed brings so much wisdom in her answers. I don't care for her language personally. I think it takes away from her genuine, caring heart. I loved so many of her answers. Instead of being an expert, she shares her own personal experiences. She helps us to look at things in another perspective. She handles each letter and each person with empathy. The best definition of empathy I have is empathy is the ability to sense other people's emotions coupled with the ability to imagine what someone else might be thinking or feeling. I would even say you can be so sensitive that you're understanding the feelings, thought, and the experience of others. This book is funny in parts, filled with compassion, and a balm for a hurting world. I realized in reading this book that we all need someone who can help us have a paradigm shift in our thinking. We have to open up to others when we are struggling. When we are depressed or grieving, it can feel like there is no way out. This is what Cheryl provides us. She pro provides us with hope that there's always a different way to look at everything. Whenever we have concerns about fear, love, forgiving family members, or harming ourselves, we have to get a different perspective. We have to do the hard work with a therapist, a trusted advisor, or a counselor. Because if we don't, though it will be move us out of the circumstance we're in, we'll just repeat it with someone else. I have heard that a high percentage of women return to abusers if they don't grow through the process of healing through therapy, AA, Al-Anon, or some other mental health analysis. You have to prepare to leave. They will go back to the abuser or pick another abusive relationship if the hard work isn't done. So to change, we have to go through the process of looking at our circumstances differently, prepare to change, and then take action steps. Our author, Cheryl Strayed, is best known her for her book, Wild, her 1,100-mile 1, walk on the Pacific Crest Trail. It is a grueling story of that long, dangerous, long walk. I want to add that I believe there's also a spiritual component to healing. True healing can change and transform us with the help of a Savior, we are to seek counsel from others, but lasting healing comes from a Heavenly Father. I once heard a quote, If a problem can be solved with money, it is just a complication. It's not really a problem. There's always a way to find an answer. Thank you for listening to Unpacking the Pages with Nancy Lee. You can always reach me at asknancylee at gmail.com. I would also like to share with you, I dedicated this podcast to my sister, Carol Maffey, who's going through a physical hurt at the time. She is the best sister in the world. She's nine years older than I am, and she's always been my dear sugar. Thank you for listening today. We appreciate you and look forward to discussing another book next time. Bye now.